Baptist Church, Hingham, Massachusetts, on Sunday, September 22nd. Our call to worship is printed in the bulletin, and we will be reading it in unison. So I invite you now to turn to your bulletin and stand as we are led together to the call to worship. Reading together. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise adores knowledge, but the mouth of the fool touches folly. The eyes of the Lord are everywhere, keeping watch on the wicked and the good. As guided by the Holy Spirit and the inspired Word of God, come, let us worship you.
you now, as through my words our hearts are united. As I cue you with the two responses, both for praise as well as for concerns, we express by responding that our hearts are united with one another as we worship, but especially as we bring our prayers before God. Shall we be united in prayer at this time? Our good and gracious God, you have taught us that we can come into your presence at any time because you are always near. And the posture that you would invite us to have whenever possible is to enter into your gates with praise and thanksgiving. Together we praise God. God. For as we praise you, we are mindful that you are the living God, the true God, who hears all prayers. Over and over again, I know, as an individual, as a follower of Jesus Christ, as one who has committed my life to knowing more and learning more day in and day out, I am in awe of the God that we worship. Unlimited power. Able to hear every prayer from each person, whoever they are, scattered around this huge world with literally billions of people. And as the unlimited God, you call each created male and female in your image, you call each to come and turn to you. You know them by name. You love them. Because of that great love, you listen. With confidence, we present our praise and petitions before you. Lord, hear our prayer. Again, we praise your name. We give thanks for the mighty God, the creator of the universe. But we especially give thanks for the God of love and the God of intimacy. Because we know that out of love, Jesus was sent. And that as the obedient son and human being that he was, that he's now glorified once again. And that he was obedient to do all that you commanded, even lay down his life for the sake of the people of the world to offer reconciliation with God through faith in him. Therefore, as your children, we turn to you with gratitude. We turn to you and we never tire of thinking and reflecting and meditating. We turn to you and present our petitions. <coughs> we can only imagine, as we look at the world, and the brokenness that is evident in so many ways, how much it would break your heart as well. Given free will, so many of your creatures, of your creation, do not follow your way. Different levels, whether it's individually, one-to-one -one relationships, or even leaders of governments. And so we pray for your spirit, your love to shine even brighter, no matter where, and that individuals would see the manifestation of your love and would turn towards you with a desire to follow justice and to truly be able in every level, to learn what it is to love our neighbors. This is our petition for our own lives as we pray for peace, and especially those with the active wars that we're experiencing would be achieved. Lord, hear our prayer. And just as you know us personally, we know one another. We're thankful for many gifts. We're thankful that Louisa is with us after having been ill and in the hospital and having to stay home for a period of time in recovery. And for her presence and what she means to this church, together we. Praise God. We thank you also for the healing power of surgery, the healing power of excellent medical care. And for those who have experienced healing recently, especially through medical intervention and through special care, we praise your name because we believe Jesus is the great physician supported by all those from the medical community. Together we praise God. God.
and we continue to pray for those who are undergoing or anticipating undergoing surgery, undergoing specific medical treatment. The period from diagnosis to then treatment is sometimes delayed. We pray for those who are on that path that your perfect peace would rest upon them and that as they choose a path of medical care, that the doctors would truly offer the greatest wisdom that they have and the best care. But most important, that all that we pray for would know that they're not alone and that your love would strengthen them, guide them, and empower them, giving them each a gift of your peace. Lord, hear our prayer. And we celebrate that there have been quite a few people within our church who have been able to travel, some who are in the midst of traveling now. We think of right now Tom and Amy who are off on a journey, and Rebecca who will be returning soon. And we pray always for traveling mercies. We don't want to take that ever for granted. And as we pray for them and the opportunity that they have to enrich and celebrate their lives, that we ask your continued blessing as we praise your name for the opportunity of these people. Together we praise God. God. And there are some people that we seek to be faithful and persistent in praying for. And so I will name just some names. And as I'm naming names, I invite all of us to think in our hearts of those people that we especially want to lift up in prayer. People that we know are struggling for whatever reason. People that we know may be confused. People that we know who feel lost in their own lives. So we continue to pray for both health as well as emotional and social well-being for all of our loved ones, our family members, our neighbors, our co-workers, as we remember these individual individuals by prayer. We pray for Bobby. We pray for Kathy. We pray for Nick. For Aaron. We continually pray for our, our requests as we remember also Irene and Jeff. Hear our prayers. And especially now, hear our prayers as we unite our voices, as we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples by saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the world. Amen.
invite our ushers to come forward as we have the opportunity to bring our gifts as an act of worship. Gracious God, as we prepare, I know I am very mindful that there are different avenues of giving gifts, our time, our service, our love and support to other people. And also within the mechanism of our current banking systems, sometimes we have checks mailed from our bank directly to the church. And so we may not be giving physically this morning, but may all of us seek for ways of giving to this church to empower its ministry and its mission both here and around the world. It was with grateful hearts that we give and it's with grateful hearts that we ask to bless these gifts and givers as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Today's scripture is found on page 1883 in your Pew Bible, James 3, 13 through 18. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you can find disorder in evil and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Thank you very much. And I want to thank Lucas and Matthew. God bless you. That was awesome. Our subject this morning is two kinds of wisdom. Every now and then I start with something a little funny, a little humorous. And this, is a, this is a quick one, amen? <laughs> a lady was stopped at an intersection. A man came up asking for money. She dug in her purse and found a dollar bill. She rolled down the window and said, I'm not giving this to you because you deserve it. I'm giving it to you because it makes me feel happy. He looked at her and said, Ma'am, well, why don't you give me $20 and thoroughly enjoy yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord, as we Examine the subject of two kinds of wisdom. Our Lord, our strength, and our Redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We all need wisdom to help us get through life in a meaningful way. You know, we, we look at a lot of historical figures and we say they were wise. Do you remember some of them, the Greek people, Plato? And Pythagoras, Aristotle, Socrates, we get the term the Socratic method. Socrates was always asking questions. And we look at these people as examples of wisdom. But James, in his letter, in the third chapter, talks about two kinds of wisdom. We're going to examine that a little bit this morning. Two kinds of wisdom. One kind of wisdom is earthly. That's the temporal. That's the, the wisdom that doesn't last. That's man's wisdom. And the other kind of wisdom is heavenly wisdom. It comes from God. It comes from the, the Holy Spirit. One is earthly it's in our natural, fleshly nature, but the other is of the Lord, from God, from heaven. Two kinds of wisdom. We're going to try to describe that and look at the qualities and look at some examples, and then fourthly, we'll look at the outcome and results. Worldly wisdom is... James calls it demonic, it's evil, it's self-centered, it's unspiritual. But godly wisdom is heavenly, it's pure. Let's look at this worldly wisdom for a minute. Worldly wisdom can be misleading. We think that if we just think about number one, that's all we need to do to have wisdom. But that's not what God's word says. Worldly wisdom is self-centered. He even describes it with the term bitter envy. Bitter envy or selfish 
ambition. That's worldly wisdom. It's the wisdom of this world. It's looking out for number one. And many of us grow up that way. You better look out for yourself. You go to college, think about number one. Just think about yourself. Don't worry about other people, just you. That's not what God's word says. And sometimes we can get caught up in selfishness without even realizing it. And so James is telling us, remember I told you a few weeks ago, James was the half-brother of Jesus. James didn't even believe in Jesus as the Lord, as the Messiah, when, when Jesus was alive. It was after he was on the cross, and then when he rose again from the dead, and then James and his brother Jude began to believe, yes, I think he is truly the Messiah, because he really is what he claimed he was all his life. James describes godly wisdom as something that we, we recognize has eternal benefits. It's not just for the here and now. The difference between, basically, the basic difference between earthly wisdom and godly wisdom, earthly wisdom is thinking about now. But the Bible says, what, the, what, what good does it do to profit and, and, and gain the whole world but lose your soul, your very soul? See, we're going to be around for eternity, whether you realize it or not. Not here, but in the spirit, we will live in eternity with God. None of us has the true wisdom by ourselves. It's from God. It's a gift. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. It is a precious gift that God gives us. And all we have to do in James chapter 1, it says, to just ask him for it. If any of you, he says in verse 5, in chapter 1, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously, generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Now that's a promise. We can simply ask God for the wisdom that we need, because we all need wisdom. We're not born with spiritual wisdom. And the important takeaway of this message is that God's wisdom is the kind of wisdom that enables us to make wise and righteous choices in life. It's His wisdom that enables us and empowers us to actually live, to walk, to think, to talk in a manner that manifests the very presence of Almighty God in our lives. I've got to say that again. His wisdom, God's wisdom, is the kind of wisdom that we all need because His wisdom enables us and empowers us to actually live, to walk, to think, to talk in a manner that manifests the very presence of Almighty God in our lives. In other words, God's wisdom shows itself in how we live. It's not just our talk, it's our walk. People see Christ, not by what you say, but it's how you live. It's how we live. It's how we walk in life. God's wisdom affects the way we relate to one another. When we have his wisdom, the way we talk to each other, somehow it's not with selfishness anymore. But we talk with a sense of being sensitive to one another, towards one another. The Bible says to fear the Lord is to hate evil, to hate perverse speech, to hate self-centeredness, to stay away from those things that are against God. And one of the things that God hates is pride. When we think of ourselves as we're better than other people, Supercilious talk, where you think you're su superior. Supercilious. <laughs> I'm superior to them. Oh, they don't, you know, they're, they're in the, the jungle. I remember after we came back, from, my family came back from Africa. We lived in Liberia for two years. And I remember going to, to a school in St. Louis. And they said, did you see any wild animals in Africa? I said, yeah, I did. I saw a lot of them in the zoo. <laughs> what kind of, you know, what kind of culture you think it is in Monrovia, Liberia? 
They have streets, they have taxis, they have hotels, they have cell phones, they have, not cell phones, they have phones, they have television, all that kind of stuff. But we have a sense of we're superior. What was that book? I can't remember. The Ugly American by, who was it? Then it doesn't matter. But the idea is that we're not superior to everybody else. God has made us all with certain abilities and talents and skills and rights and so forth and so on. And we're to love people no matter what color they are, no matter where they're from, what tracts of life they were born under, or whatever. We're here to exhibit and show the, the kind of wisdom that God wants us to show. And so the takeaway is how we, he, by allowing God's wisdom to take hold of us, we're going to treat one another differently, we're going to walk different, we're going to manifest God's presence. And we're not going to want to walk in ways of selfishness. James is saying that if you tr truly fear the Lord and want to walk with heavenly wisdom, then it should be apparent how we walk and how we live and try to bring glory to Almighty God. There's a story about a woman driver. And she, uh, she was driving her car and she was yelling and screaming at people. Get out of here! Get out of here! Just, just, just angry, beeping at people. And about two minutes later, a policeman had his lights and, and stopped it, slowed it down, said, I want to I wanna see your license, ma'am. said, wow, what's going on? I want to see your license, ma'am. He said, are you the owner of this car? She said, yes, I am. So verified it, that it was her car, and she was the owner, and so forth. She said, why did you stop me? And he said, well, I said, I saw the bumper sticker on your car that said, Honk if you love Jesus. And I figured this has to be a stolen car because you were just swearing and cussing at everybody. <laughs> how we walk and how we live should glorify God. It should exemplify some kind of a relationship that we have with, with Him. And so there are these two kinds of wisdoms. Earthly, which is temporary. Remember that. What you get here is not going to last. It's what we do for Christ that lasts. And then the second wisdom is the heavenly wisdom. That's the wisdom of eternity. And one of the characteristics, we'll get into some of the characteristics of that godly wisdom, but one of the characteristics is humility. You can't have God's wisdom without a sense of being humble. Amen. So let's look at the characteristics and qualities of godly wisdom. True wisdom is not contaminated by impurities of the flesh. It doesn't envy. You remember that chapter in 1 Corinthians 13? Love does not boast. It's not envious. It's not self-centered. But it's patient and kind. That's what wisdom exemplifies as well. Amen. The Bible says that if we are caught up in worldly wisdom, then we're going to be envious. We're going to have bitter envy. There's going to become disorder. There's going to be confusion. Because that's what happens with worldly wisdom. But the pure, the true wisdom is pure. True wisdom has got qualities of being considerate towards others. Generous in your actions. And it says submissive. Let's look at all of these. Pureness means no guile, but being open. The opposite is evasive and ambiguous. Another quality of true wisdom, of godly wisdom, is peaceable. Not arguing and not being aggressive all the time. We can be so selfish. Even in church, not this church, but some churches, we visit, you know? Sometimes we get, we, you know, just, I want that pew, you know, that's my pew, that's my, you know, that's where I, my family's been in that pew for 50 years, so what? <laughs> Arguing, aggressive, all that. Qualities of godly wisdom is being peaceable, being considerate. Let's do it again, pure, peaceable, considerate. 
Considering other people's feelings. Amen? Being submissive, ready to give way to the other person. Oh yes, you can you can go, you can step in, in front of me. You can you can get your hamburgers before me. It's okay, it's fine. Go ahead, you know. Submissive, thinking about the other person, merciful to those who do wrong. We should help people when they're when when they mess up in life to encourage them so that they can get back on track with God. Instead of being judgmental. Well, you know, she had it coming, he had it coming, she had it coming. No, that's not godly wisdom. Godly wisdom is merciful. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 Godly wisdom is merciful. Amen. It's not judgmental. And you know, sometimes we can become so legalistic as Christians. Well, they should have done this on Sunday, or they should have done this, or, you know, we're, we judge like, who are we? We have to be merciful and considerate toward other people. And it is also encouraging. It benefits. Wisdom tries to encourage other people. It's impartial. It's objective. It's not judgmental. And it's also sincere and genuine and honest. This is godly wisdom we're talking about this morning. These are the characteristics of godly wisdom. And again, it shows humility. C.S. Lewis once wrote that being humble is not thinking, of your, thinking less of yourself, but rather it's thinking of yourself less. Do you get that? I have to think about that sometimes. I don't say it right. Let me try it again. It's not, well, you already got it. It's good. We're good. <laughs> and that's true. It's not thinking so much about me, myself, and I. Thinking of ourselves less. Amen. And then two examples I want to give you today about godly wisdom. In the Old Testament, I think it's in 1 Kings chapter 3, one of the classic examples of godly wisdom was King Solomon. You remember that story? In 1 Kings chapter 3, there were two women, and they had babies around the same time. And one night, one of the babies died because the mother had slept on top of the baby, and the baby died. Well, she had switched babies, and they were both fighting over who was the real mother of this baby that's still alive. And one woman said, this is my baby. She took my baby in the middle of the night. The other woman said, no, that's my baby. She should be with me. The baby should be with me. And Solomon says... To one of his servants, guards, bring a sword here. You remember the story? Bring a sword here. He says, I'll tell you what to do. Cut the baby in half and give each mother half of the baby. And then the one woman comes up and she says, no, 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 please. King Solomon, please, no, no, let her have the baby. It's okay. And then the other woman said, no, cut him in half. It's okay. Cut him in half. And then Solomon said, no, this is the woman. The one who wanted to, who was going to sacrifice having the child cut in half. She didn't want the child cut in half. That's the true mother. Give the baby to her. That was godly wisdom. You can read it for yourself. It's, it's one of these tear-jerking -jerk, kind of stories, I think. Because when you think about a mother's love, the true love for your own child, and she demonstrated that, it's like, I can't see him, my, my son being cut in half. I'd rather he go to be with her so that he stays alive. That's a mother's love. Some of you moms, you know what I'm talking about. You know better than the dads. You do so much for, the, for your child. There's a sense of, I would just sacrifice my own life for my child. That's godly wisdom. And Solomon, Solomon dedicated dedicated himself to wanting to be the person that used godly wisdom to judge the people of Israel. We need leaders today that are understanding and demonstrate godly wisdom. The second example that I want to use from the New Testament is Jesus. Jesus talks about his mission on earth in John the 12th chapter. And this is very brief. He says in 
John chapter 12, verse 49, he said, For I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. I know that his command leads to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. So what Jesus is saying is that in order to show wisdom, I'm not doing this on my own. I'm doing what God tells me. There's a takeaway here. We need to also think for a minute. We need to ask God to show us what He wants us to say in life, rather than us uh, just, just talking randomly. Amen? Jesus never did any miracles or anything in life without connecting with the Father, without talking, having a dialogue. That's why he prayed so much every day. He prayed. Remember, the Bible is not a book to help us get rich. It's not a book that is to help us become popular or, or powerful. That's not what the Bible is about. The Bible, this book is a love letter. Amen? It's a love letter from Almighty God to each one of us to draw us closer, to invite us into a saving knowledge of who he is and to worship him. And then finally, the fourth part is what are the results of godly wisdom? What are some of the results? Godly wisdom will change our lives. It will demonstrate God living in our lives. We will develop a sense of what's called meekness and humility but I want to break down meekness for a second. What is meekness? It's not weakness. Sometimes we think, well, she's real calm and meek and quiet. That's not meekness. Meekness is it's strength under control. Strength <coughs> under control. And Moses was the epitome of God's meekness. Because he was strong, but he was under God's control. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to be strong in Him, but under His control. Not making decisions on our own, but making decisions that He would have us to make. Amen? Amen. It's what we, what we reap. We reap what, we're gonna, what we sow. What we sow, we reap. And God wants us to know that He is the truth. He is the way, and He is the life. The opposite of that is to be phony and think, you've got it all going. You know? We want to make people think that we know so much. I have a doctorate degree. That doesn't make me wise, amen. That doesn't make anybody wise having a doctorate degree. It's great. It's a lot of work. But that's not what godly wisdom is all about. It's not predicated on your degrees. It's predicated on being, living a life of purity, living a life where you study God's word and you want to be sincere instead of hypocritical. You want to be Genuine instead of duplicitous. You want to be totally surrendered to the will of God rather than selfish. Heavenly wisdom also brings people more together. It brings people in unit, unity with one another. And godly wisdom always points to God. When we are doing things, we're keeping in mind that we're doing it for the glory of God. Whatever you hear, the music and all that, I don't want no credit. I don't want none of that. I'm not looking for none of that. Amen. I'm just here to glorify Jesus Christ because he's been so good to me and he's been so good to you. Whatever you do, whatever your gifts and skills are, just do it for the glory of God and do it with a sense of gratitude. He, he's the only one that died on the cross for you and me. And so we owe him everything. Praise the Lord. And one other thing, well, two other things. It should change our lives in terms of having compassion for one another. Compassion. Caring about other people. Henry Nowlin, the Dutch priest, once said, a wounded healer is someone who can listen to a person in pain without having to speak about his or her own wounds. When you have compassion, you're thinking about them. It's not about, well, you know, I went through such and such too. I've done, you know, and we all can do that, but that's not godly wisdom. Can I get an amen on that one? Amen. Thank you so much.
It has to do with walking in God's peace, walking in His holiness, and as you do, you develop a sense of God's righteousness. Two things quickly as we get ready to draw this to a close. Spend some more time in God's Word so you can draw close to Him and get a sense of His wisdom. Amen? Amen. And the second thing is spend some time in prayer. Prayer is talking to God, but one of the things that we miss sometimes as Christians is we don't, we don't listen. We're too busy talking. I need this God, and I need this, and I need this, and I need that. You know, Lord, you know, the cat did this, and the dog did that, and, you know, the car's not, and, I, you know, God, I need, I need, I need. But if we listen a little bit and allow God to speak to us, that's what Jesus did. That's what Moses did. And that's what we can do is we listen to him. He'll speak to us, and he'll give us even more of that godly wisdom that helps us to love one another in a, in a new, profound way. Amen? Father God, we thank you. We love you. Bless your holy name, Lord. Be with us and guide us as we seek your wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>